Okay, let's get specific. Let's now talk about Transact SQL. And then after this, we're going into some demos and we'll, we'll start actually doing the language. SQL's not new, right? You've, been, you, you've known this already. It's not a, a new surprise, I think, for you. SQL has been standardized. Okay, so it is actually, it's been standardized for a long time now, almost 25 years as I record this. And it was first standardized by ANSI. Okay, so th this is just a little bit of the history of the SQL language. And then ISO, ISO, adopted the SQL standard in 87. Okay, now there are lots of, uh, lots of different dialects of SQL, and there are lots of flame wars and discussions over working with the standards and how you should implement this and how this should actually be implemented. But the thing is, all of the different relational database management systems, SQL Server, Oracle, Informix, DB2, etc., they all implement the standard in different ways. And so the standard is sort of a guideline. You must do this. If you implement this statement, it must perform this action. But it doesn't go so far as to say it has to have this exact syntax in every case. There's going to be situations where it does define what the syntax is and in other situations it defines concepts and it's up to the individual vendor to describe how they want to implement those concepts. Okay? Now here's a sort of a you know high-level view at some of the various standards here. Uh, what we're going to be working with predominantly today this is 2010 uh, as I record this here we're probably going to be still focusing on the ones in the little square here most of the code that most of the professional SQL developers will end up writing will fit within these three standards once you start getting above this and you start getting into XML XQuery uh, the instead of triggers you know you're kind of doing you're not quite at the edge but you are doing things that most of the other folks aren't necessarily doing okay? now that doesn't mean just because a piece is written here in the standard it doesn't mean that SQL Server implements it exactly as the standard suggests or it might mean that SQL Server implements part of this. Like for example the windowing functions just to give you an example that you hear. The windowing function, I'm not going to get into what these are right now, but SQL Server only implements part of the standard. Okay? Doesn't implement the entire specification. So just because SQL Server doesn't implement all of it, doesn't make it unuseful, doesn't make it not adhere to the standard. The standard will include things like you must include this to be considered conformed to the standard, or you must include part of this to be conforming to the standard. Now, working with standards is not new to you, I'm sure, right? I mean, you're probably familiar with at least one of these, uh, HTML, PDF. I think those are all standards, okay? It's up to the vendor to decide how standard they wish to make their implementation of it. Okay. Now, Microsoft, when they developed SQL Server, they went with the Transact SQL implementation. Now, I'm not going to go into a history lesson, but Microsoft is not the originator of SQL Server. There was a company called Sybase, well, still is a company called Sybase, and there was Sybase SQL Server. Microsoft wanted to get into the database market, so they licensed Sybase SQL Server. And this went on for many years until finally the agreement dissolved and there ended up with two SQL Servers. There's still today Sybase SQL Server and Microsoft SQL Server and they both use their own proprietary interpretation of the SQL standards called Transact SQL. All right, so what does this mean to you and I? That means you and I code Transact SQL. We're going to write T-SQL, 
Okay, that's sometimes the abbreviation that we'll see, uh, T SQL with a dash, T SQL without a dash. So when we're writing our queries, our stored procedures, functions, etc., we're writing transact SQL. And it's a blend of lots of the standards. It includes a, a lot of the things that were found in 92, 2003. Uh, so there's going to see a lot of the pieces of the puzzle. Okay, so we write transact SQL. And this is a transact SQL course. So let's kind of talk about how these work together. Okay, so imagine if you uh, will, let's, let's do this. Let's come up here and let's see. I'll, I'll do. This is SQL. Okay. And so imagine that this circle encompasses all of the standards all of the standards, okay, everything about SQL. Well then this little orange circle over here is going to be transact SQL. Okay, so this is T SQL. Oh that's that's actually bad. Let me that makes it look worse than it is. Let me let me make that a little more real world here. It's really more like that. Okay. So here's T SQL. And so what we actually see in this we see where T-SQL implements the standard, right? So right in here, you could see that these cross over. And then when we get out here, this part right here is called extensions. Okay. So what we're seeing is that T-SQL implements some of the standard, but not all. But T-SQL also defines things that are not in the standard. It defines concepts that are not even mentioned in the standard. It defines ways of doing things, ways of implementing the standard that are not part of the standard. Okay? Different ways of doing things where you could do a standard way or you could do a proprietary way. And the reason that I point this out is that this little section over here, these extensions right here, these are proprietary. And that means that if you code in this little section here, in these extensions right here, right? So if you write your code right there, it's guaranteed not to work on anything else except for Microsoft SQL Server. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that's a bad idea. Why would I want to do this? Why would I not just implement the standard? Bad Microsoft. No, no, no. This is common. This is the way they all do it. Everybody does this. Okay. Oracle, DB2, uh, MySQL, Informix, uh, every one of the major vendors implements it this way. They, you could have just substituted Transact SQL with PLSQL. Everybody does it the exact same way. There's no, no one language is better or worse in that regard. Okay. Everybody has their own proprietary extensions is what I'm saying. Here are the languages. You could see that Microsoft SQL Server you, uh, uses T-SQL. You could also say Sybase does as well. Oracle calls their version PLSQL, uh, DB2. Uh, they call their SQL PL. But they're all the exact same way. If you just imagine, here's this circle, and then you put this little orange sort of halfway overlapping circle, then you could just come over here and say, oh, well, that's how PLSQL does it too. Or, oh, that's how SQL PL does it as well. Okay. It's the, all the exact same thing. So don't start thinking that, oh, this is bad Microsoft, or this is just not a smart way to do it. It is how it works. Now, you might be in a situation where you have to support both Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle Server or Microsoft SQL Server and DB2. Okay? In this case, it's more helpful to know the SQL language concepts and what parts of your implementation are standard versus proprietary. Okay? Because what here's what you don't want to get into. If you have to write the same code for two different systems, let's say, okay? And you have one system that does this, and then we'll make some Mickey Mouse ears over here. And you have another system like this, and so uh, right here you've got uh, PLSQL, because this is Oracle, and then over here you've got T-SQL. Okay. 
you want to write your code to where it fits within here. Okay, makes it look like little fly eyes, right? And you could make a little smiley face. Um, anyhow, sorry. Uh, because if you write that code so that it adheres to the standard, then you can just simply make one copy of that code and you can run it on Oracle or SQL Server or DB2. That's what you, I, that, that's what you may want to do. If you started, though, instead writing the proprietary code over here on the SQL Server side, so let's say that you started doing this out here, you're guaranteeing that you can't reuse that code base. You would not be able to run that code on Oracle, for example. So the idea is here to have one script file that would run on both and, and achieve the exact same results. Now, there may be good reasons that you don't want to do that. You might want to take advantage of the proprietary aspects of each language. One good reason, speed. A lot of times these little proprietary extensions are added because of coding maintenance issues or that they run faster. They have figured out a way to make a particular sorting algorithm or a comparison algorithm run faster if you go outside the standard. So do you want the code to run in one minute or one second? You can go by using the standard you can have your code run in one minute by using the proprietary extensions it runs in one second. What do you want to do? Okay. Alright, so it is possible to write code that runs anywhere. It takes a lot of work. Okay. Now this is a T-SQL course. Okay. So that's what we're going to be working with. When we get into situations where we're working with proprietary extension code, I'll try to point it out, but I won't always do it. I won't always be able to remember to say, hey, this is uh, just so you know, this is not going to work in Sybase or Oracle. Okay. I'll try to do it, but it is a transact SQL course. So my concern is showing you how to program in Transact SQL, not trying to show you how to uh, program so that your software or your scripts work on Oracle. Right? But now I've had people take this course in, in the real world that were running Oracle and Sybase and they got a lot of value out of it, but it's meant for Transact SQL folks. Okay? All right, let's get into it. Let's actually get to some demos. Let's talk first about the management studio. That's where we'll be working. And then we'll get a little deeper. We'll do if statements and data types and things like that.